Hello everyone and welcome to Soul Standing. My name is Beth and I am here with my October reading wrap up. So most of these are going to be from Hallowed Tween, which I got to be a co-host of this year. I was super excited. Uh, my friend Storm is the one that started it and hosted and she invited myself and Lee to co-host and we had an absolute blast. Uh, so most of these are the books I read for that um, I do not have the uh, physical copies of most of these just right at hand because I'm going to be real with you. I have no idea where they went. Some of them um, I handed to Elena as soon as I got done with them. Some of them I put somewhere safe um, and I don't know where that safe place might be. And then some of them I listened to on audio. So I didn't have the physical copy anyway. Um, but I read The International House of Dereliction by Jacqueline Davies. And this one ended up being a four out of five stars for me at the very beginning. You're like, this is weird. This is not what I thought I was reading. And it's not what you think you're reading. Even if I tell you what you're reading, it's not going to be what you think. Uh, but it ended up being a really good book. Like I said, four out of five stars. Then I did The Ghost That Came Alive by Vic Kroom. This was my retro read. Um, this one was published in 1975, um, and this got a three out of five stars from me. Um, it had some spooky spots, but it was more a mystery than it was like a ghost story or anything. Next, I did A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Moss. Obviously, this one was not uh, for Hella Tween. Uh, but that was the novella that I was on. It's a uh, 3.5. So it's in between books three and four um, of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. And I gave it a three out of five. Not my favorite, but it was good. Um, I also finished Sound Writing, a guide to making audio projects. This is one of the textbooks for writing in the 21st century, which is one of my doctoral classes at the moment. Three out of five. I learned some things, but I felt like it could have been done better. I mean, I know it's a textbook, but uh, I just not the biggest fan of this particular textbook's setup. I do actually have it right here. So I can show you um, what I mean. Like, they, they set it up decently, and it's got a lot of these here, but then they have these sections in between that are interludes that should have been either part of the chapter or, like, a smaller, um, a smaller section or their own chapter. You know what I'm saying? Like, the interludes didn't make sense to me, and that could just be me. Next, I read Prince of the Mist by Carlos Sheree Zafon, and this is another one where I have the physical copy. I've reread this one multiple times. Love this book, um, but I put the book somewhere safe. Um, however, he is my favorite author, and Lucia Graves, who translated it, does an amazing job on all of his works. Again, four out of five stars. Fabulous book. Then I read Scritch Scratch by Lindsay Curry. And uh, this was our group read for Halloween. And we just did a live show where Storm, Lee, and I talked about the book and several other things. Um, and I believe it is posted. So you guys can go watch that if you want to see what our thoughts were on it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, four out of five stars. Next, I've got uh, some crochet and cross stitch magazines. So I read Creepy Cross Stitch by Lindsay Swergen, uh Crochet Magazine World's 50 Plus Spooky Halloween, um, Do It Yourself Spooky Crochet for Adults by Christopher Callis. Um, All of those were three or four stars. Then I read Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. Um, I'm going really quickly through these, you guys, because I did talk about all of these in like weekly wrap-ups and things. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out my October weekly wrap-ups. Uh, this one was a soft three. It was my lowest rated. I enjoyed it, but I felt like it was more of a YA than the older middle grade I was sold, um, or it was sold to me as. Then I got Cedar Shadow Wars by Jay Hauser. 
I've been working on this for a while, uh, not because it's not a good book, but because I've had so much going on in my life, um, and I was reading it on Kindle, so, you know, I'm going to go back and reread it and then read the other ones in the series uh, when I have a little more time. I did really enjoy it, gave it a four out of five stars, but I didn't do any written review or any in-depth review or anything because um, I want to go back and reread when I have more time. She sent it to me for a review, but she didn't care uh, how long it took me to review. So I think I'm going to, I'm putting a pause in it and then I'll come back and do a better review um, later on. Next, I read Minerva Keene's Detective Club by James Patterson and Keir Graff, meaning that Keir wrote it and James did some of the editing and, and consultation on it is kind of where these books go. Um, I liked it. It was a solid three out of five stars. Uh, then I read Rick Riordan's Daughter of the Deep. I gave this a solid four out of five stars. And there is a second book that I'm really looking forward to reading as well. Um, very much enjoyed it. It's based off of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which I thought was a really cool kind of departure from the normal like classic mythology that he uses. Then I read The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett. I listened to this audio on Scribd, which is now Everand. Uh, and this one I gave a solid three out of five stars as well. It's a real cute story about family and friendship and the magic of connectedness. Then I read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which is not a middle grade novel, but it was a great read. And it's another one where it was not at all what I thought it was going to be, even though several people had recommended it to me, either just on their channels or specifically to me, and told me a little bit about what it was. And then it, it I don't know, it subverted my expectations. Uh, this is by Sangu Mandana, and awesome. Uh, I also read Hauntingly Adorable Halloween Crochet Patterns by Kai French. I gave that a three out of five. And then my favorite book, which is so close to a five stars, uh, was A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. This one is about an autistic girl who, um, or neurodivergent girl, who ends up campaigning for a memorial when she learns that her small Scottish town used to burn witches. Um, so she like hyper fixates on the witch trials and realizes that most of the witches were probably neurodivergence. It does say in the book that she's autistic and her big sister is autistic as well. And we get a lot of discussion on like how people don't understand autism because every autistic person is different. And <laughs> if you are high functioning like myself and the characters in this book, you mask, you go to school, you might be a little weird you're the weird kid, you hyper fixate on stuff, but people just think that you're acting out versus, um, you know, actually having something that needs an IEP for it or whatever. Um, so I didn't know when I was in middle school that I was autistic. I didn't find out until I was 32. Um, so that it was kind of interesting to, to read and connect with her on that level and be able to kind of see the things that I did when I was in junior high that kind of went along with things that she was doing. So that, that was cool. And I really liked it. Elle McNichol did a really good job of writing the character and the friendship and autism and, and all of those things. Next, I read The Witch, The Sword, and The Cursed Knights by Alexandria Rogers. And I do have that physical copy. It's right here. Um, I started out with this one and the first few chapters, I was like, eh. The further I got into it, the more I enjoyed it. And I ended up giving it four out of five stars. This is based on some Arthurian legend, which I thought was super nifty because I'm actually doing Arthurian legend with my seniors in British literature right now. So it was fun to kind of see where she brought in the legends and where she kind of went off sideways a little bit. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Here's a second one called The Beast, The Queen, and The Lost Knight that I am looking forward to picking up at some point. Then I finally finished Dirt by Denise Gosselin or Ornstein. 
Um, I gave it a three out of five. It was a sweet story, but not, I don't know. It didn't quite tickle my fancy. Next to last, I read the cozy mystery Hooked on Murder by Betty Hedgeman. It's the first in the crochet mystery series. Our protagonist is like, I think she's 48, something like that. She's a widow. She works at a bookstore. There's a crochet group that meets at the bookstore and she starts learning how to crochet. Her and her best friend um, start learning how to crochet and meet with this crochet group. And there's a murder and she's a suspect. I'm currently listening to the audio of book two. I just got a little ghosty sticker. Um, but anyway, I'm listening to book number two, which is called Dead Men Don't Crochet. I enjoy it. They're fun. I gave Hooked on Murder three out of five stars. And then the final book that I finished, I actually finished the very last little bit of it um, on the morning of November 1st on my drive to work. That is The Language of Ghost by Heather Fawcett. Um, I was not too sure about this book in the beginning either, uh, but I believe it was Storm told me that she really enjoyed it. Like, you just got to push past the very beginning. And I did, and I ended up actually really enjoying it, and I gave it a four out of five stars. So, though, or no, I gave it a three and a half out of five stars. So on Goodreads, it was a soft three and a half, so it is a three star. Um, but on Goodreads, it is rated a three out of five stars. And I did. I, I ended up enjoying it. Uh, there were some things that I felt like we maybe didn't have to go as far into, um, some other things I felt like maybe were wrapped up too quickly. Uh, but on the whole, I thought that it was interesting. Um, it could go on to uh, have <coughs> to have a series as opposed to just a standalone. But looking at it right now, it looks like it is a standalone. So there's that. Uh, but those are all the books that I read in the month of October. Specifically, my books for Halloween. Um, if you would like to know more about them and I didn't go into enough detail for you in my weekly wrap ups and all that, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to do a video with more in-depth reviews on whichever one you would like. Um, if you've read them or you would like to read them, let me know your thoughts down below as well. We'll talk to you again soon. Until next time, stay safe out there, guys.